Skyrim's community has gotten larger and larger with mods that are completely changing the game. You can do anything in this game, like anything. Like bruh, look at this. <laughs> And I wouldn't even say we're in the golden age of modding yet. The best is yet to come. I tell you, I tell you that Dragonborn comes. First up, mods. There's uh, quite the diverse selection of mod categories to say the least, but inevitably there are some that are bigger than others. Skyrim Extended Cut is the first of these, a mod that completely overhauls the main questline. It aims to introduce revamped locations, new characters, relationships, and a dynamic story that changes based on the choices you make. This overhaul will also include the Dragonborn DLC, which definitely needs a narrative makeover far more than its Dawnguard counterpart. I would argue the narrative of the Dawnguard questline is strong and has aged quite well, somewhat. However, it may be in the future plans after the initial release of the mod, alongside the possibilities of the Civil War and other guilds. And to my surprise, this mod will be available on Xbox. There is no expected release date, although if I'm not mistaken, it was once expected to release in 2023. Obviously that didn't happen. However, with a mod this size, I would much rather see it done right than done quickly. Now this mod kind of took over the internet for a little bit, even massive YouTubers were talking about this, and it is called Nolvis. If you have a brain that is more more intelligent than a reddit user and a pc ready to take off louder than an airplane then you will be able to use this as novus is a mod list that literally allows you to install a thousand plus mods with a click of a button a few buttons and some waiting these mod lists completely change the graphics obviously the combat the hud and practically anything else you can imagine in the game sky oblivion and sky wind not really news to anyone at this point with a monumental amount of effort aimed to bring back not just the story and the land but also some aspects that were lost in skyrim from previous elder scrolls titles starting off with sky oblivion with the release date being in 2025 they have shown massive progress through the live streams hosted by the lead Rebel Z's. However, they're not just trying to mimic your average software engineer by hitting Ctrl C and Ctrl V. Rather, they're trying to improve upon the original design of the game. This isn't to take away from the nostalgic feel, but rather give the region a larger sense of death. They are remaking all 3D assets including swords, buildings, chairs, tables, potions, plants, silverware, creatures, and armors, and I probably missed a few. Some assets from this project can be used right now, such as Sky Oblivion's Warblade, Umbra, and the Necromancer robes. The Daedric artifacts have no plans on being more useless than the the American physical education system including Umbra, the Mask of Clavicus Vile, and Volendrunk, as they will all be reworked. The main city, Bruma, has also been overhauled to match the greatness of this mod. Unlike Sky Oblivion, Skywind's release date is just about as predictable as to what Kanye West will say next. In other words, there's no expected release date. It has a very similar aim to Sky Oblivion, aiming to improve Morrowind's models and textures and bring back some lost features, notably one of these being spellcrafting. Although they have stated it will not be easy to simply recreate it, they have shown some work and progress done on this feature. Armors will be reworked from the way they are in Skyrim in an effort to stay true to to the original vision of Morrowind. For example, the left and right pauldron will be independent of each other, and Greaves will be separate from the main armor. Unlike Sky Oblivion, Skywind will be completely revoiced. Now, in what I've stated, does this really do justice to what Sky Oblivion and Skywind really are? No. However, there is one last important detail. These mods will come at a very high price of zero dollars and zero cents. Beyond Skyrim, a huge modding project that is currently working on the regions of Argonia, Iliac Bay, Edmora, Elsewhere, Morrowind, Roscria, and of course, Cyrodiil. Famously, the demo part has been released for quite some time, going by the name of Beyond Skyrim Bruma. No, this is not the same as Sky Oblivion, as this will have its own story, new quests, and fully voiced NPCs. As many you may know Bruma is basically finished. It's available to download in its pre-release and won't be receiving many changes. They have shown tremendous progress in many other regions as well including Kavach, Singrad, and Coral. The other projects are relatively early in their development however they do show their progress from time to time on their channel and website. Apotheosis. Now this one's a little under the radar compared to the others on this list. However it looks very solid. Starting back in 2015 the mod has an expected release date of 2025 but might receive delay due to the instability of where the mod author lives. Apotheosis presents an environment that is more dark than the Instagram comment section set across the 17 planes of oblivion. Much of the story is kept hidden to avoid spoilers, but some areas have been shown by the author including Cold Harbor and Moonshadow. As for the narrative, the mod aims to make a non-linear story, as choices made in the vanilla story will affect the outcomes of the story in this questline. You will have to fight Daedric Princes, and as you do, the world will become more unstable, and it seems to ride off of a very similar vibe to that 
that of Bloodborne. According to the developer updates, many of the quests have already been completed, but are holding off on the voice acting until it is completely written. These last two are not in the conversation as much as they used to be starting off with Skyrim together, a mod which allows you to play Skyrim online with your friends. Yes, it's janky, but to be honest, it'll probably only add to the experience. It receives updates here and there and certainly creates some interesting content. The last one is rather on the bad end of news. Inigo is by far the most popular follower mod and has even caught the eye of Todd Howard himself. However, the mod author has been working on V3 for a very long time, but he has put out a statement on his YouTube around a year ago, which stated that it will be extremely hard for him to work on the mod from now on. However, even without the updates, it's the best follower mod out there. Moving over to the community side, Skyrim YouTube. I guess this would be the marketing side of mods ever became a corporate venture. Over the years, Skyrim has became wider and wider with more channels sprouting up ever since the goat Broad Jewel and his famous Hello and welcome to Bro Jewel has left the scene. There was also MXR who certainly had a questionable way of presenting mods, but he got hit by YouTube. So now we are in the new generation of Skyrim YouTube and I'm going to start off with the two goats, Heavy and Sin. They are the LeBron and Kobe of Skyrim YouTube. Yeah, my ankle lied that because I was kind of quick, so I love that loud. I mean, no disrespect to the other Skyrim YouTubers, but their production quality blows me away every single time I watch one of their videos. Now, I would put Sergeant Gimlinio and Dr. Nostalgia up there with them, but they kind of just like dipped, um, especially Gimlinio. I do understand though, as making videos with these cinematics is quite time consuming and there's a lot of things that can get in the way, such as, you know, life. However, don't let this take away from the rest of the modding YouTubers, as I gotta be honest, they be on they grind too. Now, if you're looking for the rebirth of Rajul, I would recommend Soft Gaming. His vids are jam packed with content and he has his own neatly made mod list unlike some people. Hell, it even has notes and it's split up into categories for you to easily navigate through it. Mern, who some would say is just MXR 2.0, a YouTuber who has a staple character in all his videos, sometimes branching off in terms of type of content such as exposing Skyrim's biggest scammer. And although I don't really agree with some of the topics of his vids, he can be quite informative. Now Riva, as far as I know, is the only guy who consistently uses a face cam. He also sounds a lot like Sergeant Gimlinio. Captain Panda is very similar to Soft Game with his own mod list, which I haven't tried, and at times he pulls up with some hella low-key mods, hidden better than Victoria's Secret. Next one is actually, believe it or not, yeah. Bard's College graduate, which I call complete cap on. There is no way she graduated from Bard's College. This is not true, it's, it's, it's cap, to be honest. She's got some interesting mod categories that I don't think I've ever seen, such as Argonian mods, which you'll never catch me watching, not because it's bad, but because I believe in Nord supremacy. If you're looking for the least amount of yapping, Redshift, a content-packed YouTuber who is straight to the point and has deservedly seen some strong growth recently. Also, somewhat similar to Broad Jewel. Then there are some creators who are more on the rise. What the hell am I saying? They're bigger than me. Those are Biggie Boss, who does mod list testing, and Master Cheesy, who excels in non-stop content. So if you always want something Skyrim modding related to watch, give him a go. Dropped Ice Cream. He is also a mod list tester. The only thing better than his name is the way he actually describes the steps on how to download the mod list and goes really far in depth as the aspects of it. Speaking on how to download things, this guy technically isn't a Skyrim modding YouTuber, more of a tutorial dude, but I think he has to be mentioned given that minimum a solid one quarter of the modding community just would not exist if it wasn't for this guy's videos. Gamer Poets. He doesn't just have the best tutorials in Skyrim modding, he's got the best tutorials in general. His tutorials are better than the math and chemistry videos you would watch the night before the exam. I'm telling you, this guy stays undefeated. However, these were just Skyrim modding YouTubers. Uh, if I miss someone, uh, my bad. Other YouTubers such as Spiffing Brit, Juve, Doug Doug, It's Jabbo, Fevy, and Shirley Curly have plenty of content. I almost forgot to mention one YouTuber. This guy is probably the funniest, likely has the best videos overall, and is definitely the most racist. That would be, of course, me. Now, as for modders that squad carry the community, there's quite a few. Starting off with Everglade, got some quest mods, bunch of quality of life mods, and the animated traversal mod. That one is goaded. Smooth. Now this guy's movesets are wild. He's the creator of the For Honor moveset series, and as someone who's played For Honor, holy crap, the accuracy of his movesets, I didn't even think that would be possible in Skyrim. JK, the most famous location overhauler, and as I've stated before, he just doesn't miss. John Skyrim. Now this guy be making 4k, 8k, 200k upscales of the most random things. 
like Essence Extractor. Yes, the day has finally come that I can marvel at the quality of the Essence Extractor after looking at it once. And even that's a stretch. But on a real note, his textures do be going crazy. Jay Serpa, this guy makes overhaul mods. He's just got really good stuff all around. Now, I don't mean to not purposely mention some modders, like there's quite a few, but given how big the community is, they really do be carrying the weight by themselves. So there you have it. That's where Skyrim modding is right now. There's plenty to come likely before Elder Scrolls 6.